during the COVID pandemic, we were able to pay full salaries, continue paying full salaries, even though people were not working. It's important to know that you have funding in place, that you have access to funds, making sure that you are able to pay them and that they have that security, that they have that knowledge that in come end of the month, come payday, they will get their money. Financial inclusion is crucial, but often filled with so much red tape. Imagine having a partner who wants your business to win as much as you do. Hello, my name is Napo Mudise, and today I'm going to chat to Michael Oosthuizen, the CEO of Central Bridge Trading in Tswane, about his experience with Vodapay Business Term Advance. Arambon. Michael Westays and Uchanet. Like yourself. Akas Bayahut. Thank you so much for welcoming me into your workspace. Um, I feel Michael a bit better again. V is Michael, and where are you from? I'm from the East Rand. Okay. Grew up in Kempton Park. I now reside in Pretoria. Been living here for a while. Michael is a church going, God fearing family man and trying to trying to make the best of business love it love it so what is the name of your business company's name is central bridge trading and okay. then we have a swazi company as well called cbt building take me through the process of how you got funding with vodapay business term advance i received a phone call from a client telling me that they had been awarded a hospital in swaziland they had a massive plumbing order that they needed to place and it was it far exceeded my credit limits with my current supplier. I walked out the office. I was doom scrolling Instagram. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> a Vodacom, Vodapay. It was Vodacom at that stage, I think. Mm. Uh, ad popped up. Um, something about loaning and access up to 13 million. And I thought, wow, let me. This is exactly what you need. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So mm. I pressed the contact me now button. I didn't even fill in anything. It auto filled on on Instagram. And I mean, within a within a couple of hours, I received a phone call for somebody. The interesting thing about Vodapay, which made it different, is they actually were willing to look at the two companies as... Aha! So the South African exactly. and the international which one. Was, <laughs> which was the problem, because they had two companies running right. separately. It's mm. kind of two entities that everybody wanted to look mm. at. Vodapay looked at it as a, as a... As a whole. As a whole. Right. And they, based on that, within four or five days, I had the money in my bank. Wow. As simple as that. As simple as yeah. that. And that hospital uh, is done right now. Yeah, that everything. project is done. That hospital was completed successfully. Mm. And that, that obviously the revolving credit facility that I got, mm-hmm. I used a couple of times after that again. Aha, um, fantastic. Yeah, and, and there were a couple of early settlement bonuses and all sorts of things that mm. got to pay. They're very accommodating. Right. It feels like they want to help. Now tell me, uh, Michael, what other visions do you have for your business? I would like to have staff working for me mm. that own their own vehicles, that own their own houses, Lovely. and that are able to send their children to school and university. That's mm. the dream. Well, Michael, well done to you for uh, fetching your life yeah. and making your visions a reality. Uh, I'm wishing you all the best in all your future endeavors and taking over the world. Fantastic. Thank you. Well done, Michael. Ciao. Well, there you have it. Vodapay Business Term Advance is helping entrepreneurs like Michael turn visions into reality. Until we meet again next time, Rekau Fell.
Good morning, everyone. Um, good morning, and I'd like to say happy, happy 24, 2024 to everyone joining our live stream today. Welcome to our very first Fast Forward Masters, Master Class of 2024. I'd like to welcome everybody um, into the new year and um, a new start, refresh. And I'm sure we're all excited about this year. I'm sure you've all got different goals you want to achieve. Um, and this is essentially what today's masterclass is about. In today's masterclass, we really want to explore the world of um, getting funding um, and how do you get financing opportunities for your business. We know just how important financing um, and finance options are for SMEs. And that's why we've decided to start off this year. I think we all know how we start off different years. Everyone has, you know, the, the 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 vigor of starting a new year. We've got our goals that we want to achieve. We want to really do look at different things. So whether you've got an idea that you really want to bring to life um, in this new year, or you want to take your existing business into the next level and really catapult it to new heights? Um, or you're really just looking at how do I start a side hustle? Um, a lot of the times in order for you to be able to do that, you need to think about financing. And we understand that you know, getting into financing, understanding financing, where do I go? Who do I speak to? What kind of documents do I need to bring with? You know, and what kind of questions and what what do finance see, what do finances need to see on the other side is probably some of the challenges that you grapple with. So we really decided to bring this topic to you this year so that we can assist you um, on this journey. So we really want to help your businesses, to grow your businesses, to help you start that business, really take an idea, bring it to life, and really take your business to the next level. So join us as we explore the world of finance um, and, and, and we really take you through the options and what you need to look at, what you need to think about, what's important and what's really out there. Before we get started, I'd like to just let everyone know that we will be running a series of polls throughout the day. So please do engage with these polls because we really are trying to solicit um, some feedback for you, which will ult ultimately help us run the series a lot better and also delve deeper into the topics that are really very, very rele relevant to you. So our polls, we've got three polls that you can be that you can engage with today. One of the first polls is, have you ever applied for finance? So we would love to know, have you ever applied for finance? Let us know, yes or no. Second poll really is looking at, um, have you ever been declined um, from accessing finance if you've ever applied? And we'd love to know, you know what that experience has been like. And then the third option is, from a funding, from a from a business perspective, what business stage is your business at? Are you at a startup stage to so really looking to start your business? Are you a business that's needing to grow and you really need to pivot your business? So really needing to understand what opportunities are you looking for? Is it startup or growth? So really engage with the polls um, and give us some feedback. And before we, um, we we get into our polls that you can engage with the entire day, I'd love to introduce Cheslin, who's going to be join, joining us on, on this call. Cheslin needs no introduction. His achievements really speak for himself. Cheslin is the, the founder of InNoble and member of the Forbes 30 under 30 of class of 2023. So, you know, guys, I mean, getting on the Forbes list, I think we all understand. So he, he leads InNoble, which is a fintech-based supply chain platform, and he, which has really been tr um, transformational in the African startup scene. Cheslin is very passionate ab about entrepreneurship, and you'll see he's also very passionate about empowering small businesses, medium businesses, you know, and empowering, empowering them to get access to finance. He really is um, wanting to very much lift that veil that sometimes startups and small businesses um, have a challenge um, in accessing. Um, and so let's really give him a round of applause and allow him to really um, lead us and, um, and teach us a lot more around financing and what options are available to us. So I'm going to give him a virtual round of applause and say, welcome Cheslin. Good morning, Bukle. Thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, made me blush a bit. <laughs> you know, you as a as a father, you don't get such uh, compliments. Uh, you just get all the trophies and the awards. <laughs> <laughs> but nevertheless, Bukle, um, I just want to say thank you so much for having me here. I'm very privileged to have this opportunity to share wisdom and knowledge to the SMMEs that are on this platform. And guys, please make sure that you answer the polls. The data really is going to help us 
share more content with you, uh, share more information about how we can assist and help you. But furthermore, just to give you a little bit of understanding, um, I've, I've been put on this uh, journey with, with Vodacom to really bring the best insights to the SME landscape. Now, this particular conversation around funding access is very much about how we can unlock, you know, the barrier of entry to getting access to funding. Um, we'll be speaking on various topics, but before we get there, I just want to give you some information about myself. So I'm Cheslin Denman, I'm the founder of Enoble. I've been operating the business for the last four years and I've made some great strides. Um, our platform launched in 2019 and thus far we have gotten some crazy recognition with Forbes 30 under 30. It was an, an incredible experience to be amongst the best African tech entrepreneurs, gurus out there. Learned so much from them and formed such great partnerships and friendships. Um, also recently, I've gotten awarded the EPF Tech Award for Best Tech Startup uh, that I was awarded in November last year. But besides the recognition, that means nothing. What is truly in my heart and soul as, as an entrepreneur is to give people guidance and pave the way forward for many businesses that are about to enter their school fees phase. Now, why I'm here is that I've made mistakes. I have failed many of times. And what I had learned is that with mistakes, I can either keep them to myself or I can guide others in sharing my story of the mistakes I made for you to make either the same mistake or listen and learn from those that have paid the way before you. So in my journey, um, I, as I started my business, I bootstrapped. Um, it was crazy. It was a tough journey. I don't come, come from privilege. There was no silver spoon that was put in my mouth to say, Cheslin, here's some money to start your business. I had to figure it out. I had to make a way. And for this reason, I've learned how to make the way. And today I'm going to teach those maneuvers with you, how to get access to certain funding grants and how to expand your business like you never have thought before. And if you do know, Please, it's, it's, it's about sharing that with the next person, but sharing the knowledge and guidance to teaching the other youth entrepreneurs that are just starting out, that finished their grad, that can't get into tertiary education, that cannot get into that big job or corporate company that they want to achieve. And they take the leap of faith to register that business account, but they don't know what's about to come. It's a war and not a sprint. And what I can leave you with is just a nugget of thought is that in this journey, you will fail. It will be testing times, but the rewards at the end is priceless. So let me continue. I thought I'd start off with this amazing quote. Unlocking the power of possibilities through funding access, where dreams evolve from ideas to reality. Now, if you read that again, everybody in this particular masterclass has this ambitious, gut-fearing desire to either operate this business at the level and like uh, that the, the, the video displayed, that guy's dream and ambition was to have employees that can have a car, put people through school. And if that is your burning desire, funding is the, is the, is the mechanism. It's the vehicle. It is not the road. You are the road to your business. You pave the way. The funding that's about to come, that we are about to unlock, it's the vehicle that we carry on that road. So that's a thought that I want to ponder in your minds today and think about. Because I thought it was the different. I thought, you know, if I have the money, I can take the idea to market. It's never the case. The money will burn and you will always fail. But if you have the foundation of the road that you have created through your business, the, 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 the access to finance is the vehicle of acceleration. So what is the key outcomes that we're going to learn today? Guys, just a reminder once again to, to activate your polls, to please respond to us, because the outcomes here, it's going to change. We are going to be doing a series with Vodacom, where we're going to be talking to different stages of entrepreneurs. And this stage, what I've, what I've put together is very much for your infant stage, your startup. So your zero to one million rand stage. Many of you guys are in that criteria. 
operating business, not really hitting that revenue, you at survival and you're thinking, Cheslin, I need to get out of this. If I get some cash from Vodacom, if I get some cash elsewhere, how do I expand? How do I grow? And I'm going to give you some insights on funding. Um, I'm going to give you some insights on the process. What is that journey that you're about to embark on? Your expectation and timelines. Um, often the time comes as a, as a small business. You come when you're in distress for funding. And many people, I think growing up, you know, you, you, you know that as a, as a, um, as a, as an individual, right? I think in my world, when I was, when I was young in high school, my mother gave me tuck shop money on a Friday, but I only asked a Friday morning for tuck shop money. And if I had the knowledge that I had today, I would have reminded my mother and prepared my mother on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday to tell her about this tuck shop on Friday. So she had prepared to have the money ready for me on Friday. The same concept of thinking when it comes to your business. Do not come when you need. Come when in preparation for knowing that you will need access to funding to accelerate your business. And then we're going to be talking about the stages, when to get funding. And we'll just talk about some live business case studies that, you know, has touched my heart that I've taken people from, you know, 500,000 to five, I mean, 5,000 rand to 500,000 rand. Uh, within their business to unlocking funding and 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 bigger amounts but i'm going to share a few stories with you guys so as i mentioned funding is the vehicle not the road so as you can see there's a couple of names and you're scratching your head you're thinking i've never seen these names before in our ecosystem at enable these are our funding partners that we work with uh i, I could only fit um five on year, six on year, um, but we have over 32 funding uh, partners that we work with. And access to funding for SMEs is complex. The reason why it's complex is because you don't do this every day. Um, I like to refer to it as a je ne sais quoi. If you guys don't know what that word means, it's an art, it's a skill. And the, our objective is to simplify the process as an institution. Now, funders are moving into a fintech world or model where, like Vodacom, brilliant, right? Upload documents, bada boom, bada boom, got the money, right? But there's a certain degree of understanding the business complexity, just like uh, the gentleman on the, on the video explained, that he had two businesses. How does he marry it? Now, and understandingly so, that Vodacom is, is one of the elite fintechs in the market, but many other institutions don't understand it. And so what we do as intermediaries, we kind of understand your case and we bring that together. So we have Zwani Financial. They fund us in the construction sector, right? Uh, we have done over 5 million rand with Zwani for small businesses transacting between about uh, 25,000 up to uh, 500,000 rand with Zwani Financial. Um, in the construction, high-risk lender, um, takes quite risk on small businesses, but we, we partnered up with them because we saw that many businesses are not fi um, financing construction because it's so volatile and high risk. Um, we got investment. investment. Investment is a crowdfunding solution. So if you think of it, how crowdfunding works, like Stockfile, right? That you come to them with your documentation in preparation and your actual project. And you say, this is what we need to do. It's we need to build a hospital. And what they do is they have various angel funders that invest in their platform and they upload the project. And then it becomes a bidding war on their end is that the funder says, I want in on this deal. And they all start pumping in money. Once they've raised the capital for your particular project, they then uh, disperse the funds to you. Um, it, it, can, it can be very quick or it can take some time because they have guys on the phone speaking to funders, getting them excited for your particular deal and project. But however, making your deal appetizing, it's a skill. And that's what you need to do. How do you narrate your deal to be in funded, um, to be, um, how do I say this in a better way, to make it appetizing to investors, to want to buy in, to want to bite into your particular deal. We obviously partner with 360 Finance, which is another financial house. Christine runs that with me. 
And they've been our partners for the longest time with it because they focus on an array of things. So from getting access to the bank's money, um, if you're obviously on that tier, but in the small business space, like uh, what we've been doing quite well in is solar finance. A lot of businesses are wanting to, to um, invest in solar. So we've been getting a lot of solar approvals because in Cape Town, you can pump money back into the grid and you obviously don't want to rely on ESCOM. Um, so that's once again, they do a lot of deals with that, but also asset finance, property finance. We have gotten a couple of deals approved there. Uh, Vodacom, that's why I'm here. They've been one of our partners. Quick, accessible, easy finance to get access to. I'll show you later on in a slide um, all about the Vodacom book. But we have many funders in our network. Um, I left the two for last. These are DFI's funders. So CIFA, it is the small enterprise financial agency. This is government institutions. Now, best believe they are sitting on a truckload of cash. The problem that we face with these government institutions is that they have a lot of people employed that are checkbox people, right? So they have a tick box. And if you do not qualify on that tick box, unfortunately, you don't get a response to say you're unsuccessful. Uh, kind of, they just forget about you because there's so much inundation of, of orders. However, what we try and do is bridge the gap, is we try and make your case so equipped that they cannot say no because they have a lot of money. However, you need to meet the mandates. Now, funds that they are busy with at the moment is a youth challenge fund, right, that they got a lot of cash for. They have something called TRIP, uh, Township Entrepreneur Program. So if you're in a rural township area, they disperse about 350,000 rand on very good interest rates. And then your biggest fund that's sitting at a lot of millions, it is the manufacturing fund. So if you have a manufacturing firm, um, ideally, you know, DFI is building your money with, I always tell people this, and, and this is my own perspective. Uh, government has their own bank, right? Fund through the bank, build a reputation, become a recurring lender, and borrow and borrow and borrow, build, build, build. Um, you're most likely going to be successful because government obviously compensates, and now um, quite a bit because they want to encourage business opportunities, they want to encourage growth. Uh, you obviously have NYDA as well, National Youth Development Agency. Now, this is a point of reference to go to when you're at ideation phase. What ideation phase is if you have that idea that you've been pondering on for some time, but you have just taken the chance of registering the business, open up the bank account, done all the small things in place, you can go get a, a minimum of 50,000 rand grant. Guys, I said it, grant funding, right, with the NYDA, but you have to be under the age of 35. Now, everybody, maybe I didn't touch on trigger points with these five. We have ecosystem partners that cover an array of things, right? I've just mentioned six here that can potentially help you meet your objective. Uh, but at the end of the day, what we do as consultants and a, as a platform that we've created is to simplify the process of unlocking the access to these funding institutions and markets. So what I've done is that I've, 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 put, I've, put in the, I've put this together so you can understand kind of the tiered approach, right? So there's a couple of danger. You're like, oh, I've tried there. I've got in a decline. Cheslin, they wasted my time. They did not respond to me. What happens is in the fi finance industry, guys, there are more people that need money than there is money in the country. That's a given, right? So to unlock that money, you need to stand out. You need to have your I's dotted, your T's crossed. Now, in asset finance, this is to secure buildings, machinery, vehicles, Mazanzi Fund, asset finance, profit share partners. These, these are the big boys, mavericks in the industry that are providing asset finance to businesses. However, this table here that I'm showing you is more designed for your bigger corporate, I mean, your, for your bigger SMME, your more mature SMME. The reason being, and I'm going to explain this in detail in my next slide, why you need to why it's challenging for small businesses to tap into this because these institutions have quite an extensive criteria to meet in order to unlock funding right now you have contract finance purchase order funding there's a couple of names you know uh, cash buzz bridgement beyond uh, source fund this capri fund discount desk these are all these are all partners of ours 
that we leverage because we try, try and make sure that you meet the criteria to stand a better chance to unlock it. Because a purchase order alone that you have a secured contract that you have in your company's name, unfortunately, is not always enough. And what we need to do is that we need to know that you are you reliable? Do you have the right requirements to unlock the funding? And often people be like, often SMEs are like, but I got the contract. I don't understand why not. That frustration gets built and it leads to this rejection. And rejection often stays as a long emotion as a starting up entrepreneur where you have to bob and weave move without emotion, move quickly and find the right partner and person to get you access to the money. Um, in our current company, we don't have emotion because we're dealing with you as a client that has the emotion, but we eradicate it and we make sure that we find you the cash you need in order to succeed. But we understand the requirements and we are cutthroat with our SMMEs and our customers. Because I say, if you do not have these components or we do not get these criteria, unfortunately, we know the answer that's about to come, which is a no. But if you take the time to invest in yourself and equip yourself with the right resources of information, I think of it like this. If you have a gun in your hand, right, and you have the correct documents, you load the gun with one bullet. You have the purchase order, you load the gun with a second bullet. You have um, all your annual financials that you, there you can pop, 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 fire at the, at the financier. And surely you will shoot him dead because you have everything that is ticking their boxes. And this is what we ideally want to achieve in making sure that you have your bullets in the gun before you go knocking on doors, because the worst thing for a financier house is a time-wasted SMME that is not prepared and doesn't have the right tools in the toolbox. Right. Um, you have business loans, which once again, a lot of them double dip in the different finance options. But once again, this is to, you know, hiring of staff, um, bridging cash flow, purchasing of stock, um, D development finance, I often go for business loans to NEF, to CIFA, um, to uh, DTI. Those are my government institutions that I utilize for those components. But once again, everything is possible, but it's possible once you have these criteria. Now, I just assure people that what I'm about to take you through, it is the governance requirement standards that if you have all of these things, I'm not saying that every institution requests these things, but we are in the business of let's be over prepared in order to succeed. And the list of requirements that you see on your screen, I'm going to take you through today, right? So the first thing that businesses check is your company registration. And surely it's the start of the year. You guys should have gone on CIP CIPC and paid your 150 Rand to get your business uh, updated. Right. And this is a common mistake that small businesses just neglect. They don't submit it or they rely on the accountants to submit it. But it's your responsibility, business owner, that you check these documents yourself or get a report on these documents. Your proof of bank account. Now, often people have this bank account. They submit their bank statements. Fair enough. But often the bank statements are older than three months. But financial Financial houses want to see the updated stamp on those bank accounts in less than three months to show the legitimacy of your business. Your certified copy, not older than six months. That's the legal uh, requirement. But some of them are, are iffy and they want a updated three-month bank statements. I don't see the logic in it. <laughs> your ID is your ID. But these are the requirements. You either adapt or you die. And these are the things that I often tell my my entrepreneurs that are coming through but she's like, why i said i don't make the rules i just stick to them and if we stick to them and we make sure we have them the chances of success will be higher um and proof of address so people want to know where you live um as well as where you work so it's often small businesses you guys work from home they want to see a utility bill of wi-fi this is also something that you should consider that if you have a registered business Take out Wi-Fi on the business name. 
so we can meet that proof of address criteria. Many people don't do it, but people scramble and say, oh, can I go to the police or get an affidavit? Yes, you can. But if you have the document dated from a MWeb or a Vodacom and it's in your business name and it has a business address, it's a pure tick box, not a consideration of this question mark on that particular document. As well as your BE, you can have a BE affidavit as well as a BE certificate. Those things are obtained on CIPC and an affidavit, you can obviously get that genetically anyway. What is one of the biggest, number six, the biggest concerns with financial institutions? It's a tax clearance certificate. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you guys have a certificate in your hand. That, ha that certificate has an expiration date at the bottom of it. And it says um, the 10th of October, 2024. Ah, I'm safe. I'm compliant to your best of understanding. But there's this component that says tax pin on there. And that tax pin is checked by funding institutions. And often, if you do not submit your returns with SARS, that pin expires. And no financier is allowed to give you money if you are not compliant with our South African regulatory service. So bear in mind that these are the requirements that you should be conscious about making. Have I checked all my documents before I go and just say, ah, oh, the document is there, let me submit. Because often this process is rush, 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 because we have the need of, um, I mean, desperation. My staff won't get paid if I don't get this money. My, um, I'm, I'm about to run out of cash. I might not get paid a salary this month. And that's not the point of when you go to a funder. Because a funder is very particular in terms of their checks. Not everybody is like Vodacom where they have AI and all these smart tech that can do trend analysis to make a decision fast and effectively. But if you're looking at a broad spectrum of, of institutions, these are the requirements that they will check against your uh, funding application. Now, the CSD, this is a requirement only for government institutions that, that they, they need this. It's called the Central Supply Database. So when you're engaging with state, they often ask you for an NAAA number. I'm sure you have heard of it, or you, a unique number. Now, the NAAA, the NAAA they punch it into the CSD because they it's a central base that can check your company registration, your valid bank account, your proof of address, and your BE status, all on one database, right? Uh, government uses this as a quick component to check information. However, it's a live report reading. So if you do not submit a report updated of three months, often you don't even know the own status of your business because it can change, right? Um, you have a company profile and a business plan. Sometimes the government institutions want a business plan. I don't know why they want this anymore. Uh, it's, it's, it's so 1982, <laughs> if you ask me. But these are the tick boxes that they request. Um, this, this thick document that they want to see that you have given, given your business well thought of. Yes, great to have a business plan. But a company profile is more... Of a, of a deck that you can present your business without words. Because remember, when you are engaging with a financial house, often the time is that you get a company like Plascon that's applying for uh, opportunity or funding for BRICS. Now, how can a paint company apply for money for BRICS? Because they also pivot and diversify their profiles. But often the company profile should demonstrate that they do a source of supply and delivery of various items in the marketplace. Do you get where I'm going with this? This then on your, on your company profile explains your vision, your mission, what you're trying to achieve, what are, the, what are the components of your business and what other avenues that your business wants to achieve. Right? Um, three to six months bank statements. Now, depending on the risk and how long you've been in business for, they might ask you for three, or six month bank statements. Now you see this thing here, business or personal. I like to use the word and personal because often the time business uh, finance, financiers houses want to see the characteristics of your business, right? 
as an example, on a business account, I'll give you one example of a client that got declined from funding for something bizarre, which I, I never understood it until I unpacked it with the, the financier house, is that the client was consistently transacting for liquor at a bottle store on the business account. And these transactions would happen recurringly all the time. And one of the declines was because of trend analysis that they were scared that the person would then buy liquor uh, with the financier's money. And they declined the, the, the ask. And I always tell my customers that if you wanted to prepare for, for funding, keep the business to business transactions. Keep your personal to personal transactions. And rather draw over that money for you to then do that or draw an EFT or an e-wallet or whatever the case might be if you're a small SME. But do not um, transact for things that are not business related in your business because it does have a characteristic effect on applications. Now, 12-month cash flow projection, it's something that a lot of small businesses I find struggle with. They don't know what to do in that instance. It is merely a projection of what your business will be able to achieve in 12 months with the funding requirement ask that you're going for, right? So I think a lot of businesses do a 12-month cash flow projection without the financial ask included in their projections. Now, accountants, bookkeepers, all of them can help you, even us at Enoble. We can assist you with these projections because it's merely a, an assumption of where the business is going to go. But what it does indicate to the financier house is that you have well thought of the growth of your business and where it can particularly go. And this also gives the, the, the fund the clarity to know that this business actually sees an upward trend and not, a, and not a downward trend. And that's what we look for, right? Annual financial management accounts. Wow. This one is big. This bullet, I think it's one of the, the bullets that either break it in, in, in the financier world or don't break it. <laughs> you shoot a blank or you shoot the real bullet. Now, annual financial statements, why is this so important? It's the historical performance of your business. Now, many of you that is been trading, um, I often get this as a massive statistic that almost, I think it is 68% of small businesses from zero to one million do not have annual financial statements within their business. They're just operating. And in order for you to have an annual financial statement, you need to have a bookkeeper or do accounting yourself to put together um, your books and send that to a CA to look at and, 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 and formulate that information. Management accounts, so, so in normal, normal business world, you got the February, to, to next year, March. That's a normal financial year. Some businesses do vary based on when they register. But that annual financial statement is where we look at the what is the information that you have gathered within your business. That is your Bible, your book, your report. Management accounts as well, very simple. It is the in between the annual financial. So if we are looking at a, a getting investment now for our business or getting access to funding, once again, be, bear in mind that your, your management accounts is very important because it's the in-between of your financial year. Okay? If there's any questions around this topic, please, guys, I'm open to really unpacking it in depth. Uh, but I don't want to go too much because I want to I give you guys the overview of what we want to achieve. Uh, we also have supporting documents like letters of intent. This is really ammunition to helping um, your business get the funding over the line. It's, it's the requirement that is needed to say, hey, I have fruit and veg, right? And I want to get, get money to get more vegetables to supply spa. But I don't have that cash right now. Spa, give me a letter to say that if I can deliver your order, you will purchase from me. That a financier will drool over. Because they then know if I give you money, there is a ready corporate client, there's a ready customers awaiting for your order. That gives us confirmation to know that there will be money coming in. Not, oh, I need money for this particular idea. I still haven't tested in the market. I still haven't validated. Really? 
Are you the first one to try that idea? How much people have failed in that idea? There's no access. So letters of intent is the trump card that really helps you. Once again, the second point is letter, um, reference letters and trade reference letters. What this is, is that every time as a small business that you are, do, does a job and the job is successful, ask your client to please give you a review on Facebook, on Instagram, type a letter on a letterhead because you use that in ammunition to say, I'm a reputable customer. I mean, I'm, I'm a reputable business that has done work with A, B, C, D, E. If you can go up to Z, I'll be very impressed. Um, a loan breakdown. There's a saying that I use often. If you take care of the cents, the rands take care of themselves. When you are doing an ask to a financier, if you're asking for 500,000, a million, if you're asking for 25,000 rand, make sure you provide a loan breakdown to the cent of what you're asking because it gives the financier confidence to know that you there's no gaps there's no other twenty thousand rand that's sitting in limbo or a ten thousand rand what are we using that money for allocate the loan breakdown to the cent it really helps your application in large now this with a lot of my financiers because a small business comes to us at an infant stage of six months, um, or they, they either they come to us at an infant stage, often financiers say, this is very high risk. Um, does the customer have any sort of collateral or securities to put out? I'm sure you guys are saying, yes, it's Cheslin. I've got asked this question so much times, but I have no securities. I started this business with nothing. I'm growing it and I still have nothing. This is something that you really should consider, even in the early stages, buying assets, buying collateral. So you can put down to say, I have a manufacturing firm. I own these things. If I'm asking for money, you guys can take these things from me if the deal goes belly up. That's what the financier is looking for. An attachment for emotion that they can come and remove the things that make you operate. It's a very much a scare tactic, but it also helps you have uh, get access to the money. Um, we have noticed this over and over again. Cars, vehicles, assets, um, anything that you own that's in your name. You can also put up sureties that you can bring in a, a, a uncle or auntie that can stand that has assets that also helps you. But it's something that um, I like to talk about because Funders don't mention it up front. They wait till the last and say, do, and, and then they ruin the whole deal by saying, uh, don't you have any uh, security to put out because we found X, Y, and Z um, on risk parameters. So consider that when applying for funding, do I have any sort of assets for security to put down in a particular funding ask? Once again, Vodacom doesn't ask for these things, but there's certain financial houses that do uh, request this. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to explain to you the, the, the focus, right, of our journey, right, in our, 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 our company. So compliance, verification check, I, I told you about this list. This is the holy grail, right, to getting an entry into talking to a funder. If you do not dot your I's and cross your T's from a compliance perspective, we go as far as checking your credit because we want to check your credit because we don't want any default judgments, you know, all those things uh, to come into the deal, right? So we try and resolve all of the no's that the funder could potentially ask before we actually present the deal, right? We make sure that we, we call it the word funding ready. We make sure that our clients are funding ready. And guys, this is what you need to do yourselves. If you're not going to additional service provider, make sure that you look at the rubric of the funding application. Do a, don't apply with hope. Apply with certainty to know that I actually stand a bloody good chance in getting this money. I That's the confidence level that you need to have. But you don't have that confidence level if you are um, at a point of, Ish, they asked me this and I don't have it, right? In our institution, what we try and do, we try and source the best fund uh, for our customers. Now, once again, everybody in this room knows Vodacom, right? 
hypothetically speaking, if Vodacom declines, where else do you go? And that's what we found in our marketplace. Um, if you go to CIFA or a government institution, and, and, and like I'm saying, the response has came through. There has been declines. What is your next move? What is the next option? With that emotion of disappointment, the fear of losing everything, where do you go? And we have built an institution to say, we will source and hunt the best funder for your business requirement. We also ensure that the funder pays on time. This is often a, a, a situation where funders, I don't know if you know how the banks work, but funders work the same thing. Take money, borrow money, wait for money to return, leverage the cash again out, make interest and, and, and grow. Now, with the, with the funding, uh, we make sure that the partners pay and on time. Because often, like I explained in the beginning, you're at a distress point when you need money. This is 65% of businesses that come for funding. You need it now. Please, if I don't deliver in the next two weeks, the deal's done. And we try and make sure that we, we are always on the customer side, making sure that that payout is, is maintained. And then the biggest part, part five. Guys, if you remember anything in this masterclass, remember managing and maintenance of my documents. When applying for a government order, when, when dealing with procurement, when applying for funding, Maintain your documents. Make sure you hound your accountant to keep an eye on your documents while in process. The biggest hindrance of getting our money back from people that our institution and our world borrows from is that documents expire during the process and it, it delays the payment uh, that comes in. So remember that two, there's two times that people check your documents. is when you're about to, uh, in, the, in the validation process, Right. This now we're talking about like an order. The client customer checks your documents. You get the work. You do the work. At the end, finance does the fine cone check. They will not pay a business that is non-compliant. Period. And that often causes the friction. And so what we have done at, in our world is we built a technology that monitors and maintains your documents throughout 12 months. So we never have to manually check those things all the all, all the time. So, sorry, let me just have a, have a sip of coffee here. And now I'm talking a lot, and I know there might be so much questions in the room that is gauging around. But we will take the Q&A afterwards, and we will we'll dive into a, you know, personal scenarios of this. Now, on the screen, you have your funding stages. I think a majority of SMMEs, I don't know who's all in the room. I can't see you guys. I wish I was standing in front of you guys. But a lot of you guys are in your early stage, the first six months. Now, I'm going to give you the advice that I took. Grit, vision, and savings. I'll tell you a quick story. I got retrenched from a corporate company. Um, I had a couple of money. I, I first made a commitment to my wife. I married her with a bit of money. <laughs> and I said, if I'm going down this journey, I'm, going to, I'm taking a person with me. <laughs> I'm very grateful for doing that. But once again, the, le the money that I had left, I plugged it all into my business. I said, this is my, I'm, as long as I grow this, my aim is to get customers to stay alive and keep this as a living buffer for as much as I can, Right. And what I did was I joined incubation programs. So people to educate me on skills development, how to be a better leader, all those components. Right. And I validated my business with many people of interest, networking events. Those peoples became part of my journey and my product. Right. And where I leverage cash. And like I'm saying, I'm talking from what I've done. Okay. I went to NYDA, I was in the youth category, and I leveraged 50K, got some laptops, uh, got some desks for the office, um, and I joined an enterprise supply development program that gave me um, some free airtime to, to, to get office rental space for six months, right? Enterprise supply and development, I'll talk to you guys, that, that's another day's conversation. But those were, the, those were my angle in my early days, right? When you are one year old, this is where your business starts seeing traction. Wow, making, you know, 10, 20,000 rand recurring revenue, 50,000 rand recurring revenue. This is now where government departments and funders like, um, 
like um, Vode, um, Vodelin hubs, right? After 12 months, right? They will entertain your application because you have certain requirements of components. One of the biggest requirements are your annual financials. And I think I expressively made it known why that's important, right? Preparing for investment is the main priority. So remember, I told you, don't come to a financial institution in distress. Come with preparation to say, hey, this is where I'm going. I'm going to need access to cash. Can I go and start doing the process of applications and go everywhere possible? Because once that happens, once you're in the system, they then start watching you and now you start meeting criteria so when the money is come you already have a pre-approval process going you can just plug in that po or that particular order or that letter of intent or that this or that that and that will be able to help you reach the top players the best position to be in is that money from the bank to build with the bank but in order to get there you need to surpass these tiring tedious and challenging stages that you need to go through you should enter competitions in your in your stage. Like for me, and like I said, I talk about experience. I'm, I have a fintech business. I entered competition. And one of the things I made on Forbes is because the recognition, recognition, recognition gets you the, the, the big goals, right? But enter business competition. Uh, SAP has a, has a fund that they do every year for competition. Um, let me think of others. SAP, um, uh, uh, Hollywood Bets has a fund that they does, that it's just competitions that you can enter, pitch your product, uh, show them what you're busy with, show them your journey, and you can access cash. And that cash can go a long way for you. And then once you're obviously in your third year, that's now you have done all of these requirements. You're keeping them alive, right? You're not faltering on maintaining these documents. That's when your business model comes in play. You have quite a bit of clients. You're showing that top tier funders will dish you cash. I can tell you now, they will, they will, they will hand you money because they have a component of KPI. We need to invest in businesses. However, the businesses are not meeting the requirements. They are cash, not enough pipeline of compliant businesses. That's the gap that we're going to, I'm trying to educate to fill is that become a compliant SME. Believe me, if you're a compliant SME in this world, as a small business, you're part of like the 5% club. Because businesses do not get work because they don't meet the criteria standards. Just some credibility. We come to the end of this. Uh, just people that we have worked with in our journey and guiding them and helping them. A couple of big names in the game. And then obviously partners that strengthen our, 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 our company. Um, really worked with a lot of these institutions. Vodacom's new on the list. We're going to kick butt with them. And then a little bit about Vodalind. Um, the journey is very simple. One of the one of the values that that I've seen compared to others, um, and I think Bushley mentioned it early on, is that the requirements to get access to funds is quite easy. It's online. It's click of buttons. It's fast, effective. And one of the cool things that I have experienced, and one of my client, Mighty, you know, um, the preparation of documents. Uh, it's it's easy to go through this journey. And the response time for them to give you feedback is quick. Um, obviously, bear in mind the interest rates, but one of the things that you will be compensated for is that if you pay your loan back quickly, you know, your interest rates, there's, there's rewards, there's bonuses for you guys to get access to. So take down this link, URL, test it out, check it out. Go try the system, do an application, and see if this works for you or not. If it doesn't, by all means, contact me. We can be able to guide you through the journey. Um, these are, this is my, my Instagram. We also do a lot of education. I like to do these little clips uh, and lives on, on our social media because I truly am ambitious to really helping South Africa mold, I think. And I'm so proud to be South African at this moment. Tyler's winning awards. South Africa's killing it. Pafada's played tomorrow. Yay! I just want to be a superstar myself. <laughs> So I'm adding to that, and I truly am passionate about helping businesses grow, develop. Um, I'm young myself, but I'm super ambitious to making sure that Africa as a footprint, um, and South Africa especially, gets the necessary support needed to, to achieve. Quickly, I'm done. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed this.
I would like to go back to the Q&A and see exactly what questions I can address. Yeah, um, so I'll definitely help you um, with some of these questions. And thank cool. you. Uh, thank you for all the information. I'm sure everyone on this live stream is very grateful um, for this moment. Um, I, I think there's a wealth of knowledge that you shared, but let's quickly um, run through some questions. Um, I think I'll start with the first one, right? So I'm just thinking, you know, a lot of us have great ideas and you want to start a business. And sometimes the ideas that you have in the business you want to start is capital intensive, right? So right up front, you might need access to funding, but you might not have a track record. You know, so what does somebody in, you know, in a position like that, are there options to get funding, even if you don't have a track record and how do they go about it? Definitely there is options. It's, it's more, it's a challenging, it's a more challenging approach to getting access to finance. But like I said, it's all about, getting the, your potential customers to, to want to invest before they actually receive the product, if you get what I'm saying. So the letters of intent and your business model is the key fundamentals to unlocking that. I can give you an example in the scenario. There was a, a customer of ours called Jacob Jam. They're now on the shelves of Spa, Pick and Pay, you name it. And at the early stages, they would, the, he worked for CDs and they were the off cuts of the fruit. He saw that they were wasting and he's like, no, mm. I want to take on this waste and make jam from it. But he needed a 2.7 million rand injection to get that machinery. And he built a business case study on showing that the waste, showing that there's a customer for jam, showing that Orgot is the predominant jam company in the market. And he tried himself as this black entrepreneur that can take on in the jam sector and he got his 2.7 million rand with a proper case study behind his business one of our clients nigel jacobs brilliant you can see it on on shelves he's he's really made a name for himself um but that's kind of a scenario that i say if you do the due diligence correctly and the funder can see that gosh there is a penetrating market there is customer that has intent for this product they surely they will invest especially if it has, and one of the key elements is job creation. That's fantastic. Um, thank you for that. And I think the key part that you've just mentioned there is that business case and how important that is. You know, so that when we're thinking of ideas, even whether you're wanting to grow your business, that those numbers are really important um, and possibly, um, you know, something for us to look at maybe for another possible masterclass is business case. What do you need to think about? What goes into it? How do you build one? So maybe it's definitely something that we'll consider from a team perspective. I want to move on to one of the other questions that we've also got here, which I think is really good as well. So, you know, with potential um, financial service providers, how do you check the legitimacy of some of these providers, right? Um, how do you, is there a way that people can go about, because, you know, you know people don't want to land, land themselves up in, in a position where it's actually not a legitimate business and a, not, not a le legitimate um, financial service provider. So how can they check check that oh definitely so so the you need to check the fsp license right so the everybody has an ncr license that they need to trade with so the the, the national credit regulator you can actually go on the website and you can ask the financier can you give me your ncr registered because i can tell you now there's a lot of micro lenders that are scammers mm -hmm. uh, and guys guys in this room please don't just dish, dish out your your documentation we have experienced a lot of things that go wrong and people are frauding you. You're getting emails left, right and center. It gets bad. So really be particulars, uh, work with people that know the industry well. Um, it will really help you from not making what we call school fees to make those mistakes. Thank you. I think that's important, right? Um, you know, um, you never want to find yourself in a position where you're getting scammed. I think um, it's really important to just do the due diligence. Final question. Um, somebody um, on the chat says, my business has been running since 2019 and we service large insurers. I have I have an empowerment project for PD PDAs and I've built all inclusive technology, but we wish to launch. Um, but I need 10 million. Um, I can't see the end, but I need 10 million to make all this happen. What is my next step um, in terms of what would their next steps be um, to get going? 
for this. I'll need to see the business case. We'll need to take them through our system. Um, if they need to register on Enable. We need to obviously have a conversation and consultation to see which which funder would we need to match. I don't know what PDAs are, so uh, please uh, forgive me for not knowing what that is. But I, I, once we unpack it, we will be able to have a consultation. I'll be able to guide um, and then position them with the correct financial institution that can particularly unlock. There's money, Ukle. There's really a lot of money. Uh, guys just do not know how to position they, they, they ask because they do not do this every day. Um, once you understand how to position yourself, meet the mandates of these, these, these institutions, your success level increases to 85%. So um, I think, Chess, if is there anything else that you would like to add? We're about um, to close out our first successful masterclass um, of 2024, but I'll allow you to have any closing comments um, to the viewers. Guys, I can tell you, um, I can only leave you with some motivation. And there was testing times with my business itself. You know, I mean, I'm in a market that's so futuristic. Uh, people don't understand compliance, governance, all of these things. And I've built a technology around it. Gosh, firstly, you don't understand now this tech. There's a lot of uh, barriers to entry. But if you do not give up on your dream um, and, and you, you, you fall in love with the vision, it's all about falling in love with your purpose and your vision and changing whatever you need to change. The how doesn't matter. The how really, it's insignificant. But the vision, if the vision is clear of where you want to achieve, um, if, you look at, if you look at all the big leaders, it's, uh, you know, um, what's that guy's name? Musk. What's it? Uh, yes, yes. Um, Elon you know, Musk. Jeff yes, uh, Jeff Bezos. All of them had a vision, had a mission. But the how is insignificant. We do whatever it takes as entrepreneurs to bob, weave, make money, survive, do whatever it takes. Be legitimate. Key, have your doc, your ducks in a row. Just don't give up. That's it. Don't give up. Survive. Stay alive. Stick to your core value. Um, and and believe me, I don't think there is somebody like me that is super passionate about giving time to people to truly make them understand. Because I was there where you were, and no one explained this journey to me. Everybody just yeah. says, Chess, you need to do this and this. But no one takes the time to give me the understanding of, if I do this, what's the outcomes? So happy to talk to whoever needs to be spoken to. Guys, you can guys can get hold of me on my email. It's cheslin at enoble.co.za. You guys can, uh, you know, DM me on, on LinkedIn, Cheslin Denman. Uh, you can get hold of me on social media on our company's uh, page, Enoble, I-N-O-B-L-E, on Instagram. And happy to connect. Um, if you guys want my contact number, the business number is 082-772-1037. Um, WhatsApp us. Chat with us. We're really happy to help. When is the next session? Thank you, Chess. Um, and I'm sure everyone is very grateful, like we are, for you coming to spend the time with us, really sharing your knowledge for, um, you know, with a topic that's so important um, and unlocks a lot for the SMEs that are really important for our economy. And with that, um, we'd just like to say thank you. Um, and I think next, I think it would be really important for us to also just look at our poll um, and see what the results of our poll um, were. While I wait for it to, to, to load, um, We'll just share what the results were, what everyone Ooh. is interested in. And I think we'll Please. also just use it. Pardon? Now I can see the poll. It's, it's displayed to us. Go, you go ahead and go ahead and share it. <laughs> yes. Cool. So yeah, so yes, 41.2% 41, 41 people in the room applied. Um, there was 34 votes and no, a high number of no people have applied for funding. Interesting, guys. Interesting. A lot of value you could have taken from this. Can we go to the next one? Um, so, okay, how many, so there was, okay, not applicable, they haven't applied, um, 31% said yes, they have been declined, um, love to chat with you guys about what was the reason for declining, if mm. they've ever shared it, and then 25% said no, so a high turnaround of 25% of the room said that they actually have not been declined, so that's fantastic, so you guys are doing something right. Very nice.
Okay, so are you seeking funding for startups? Are you looking for additional fundings for existing business? Start, for startup business, 44%. For existing business, 55.6%. So I think the, the next conversation of existing businesses and mature yeah. companies will probably come in quite handy for you guys yeah. where we can unpack exactly, you know, how to go about getting access to the, the other funding or, or, or uh, voter lens products for the existing business. Because uh, existing businesses are voter lens key uh, a key client, eh? <laughs> key definitely, customer. definitely, um, so definitely. Yeah, guys, click on that link, uh, try, and, try and get access to finance and, and talk to us. Yeah. And with that, um, that concludes our first ever masterclass for the year. And I would just like to say thank you to everyone. And I think the big um, element that we just want to make sure that we all understand is, you know, we've shared how to get access to the funding, but that's the start of your journey, right? It's putting together that business case, making sure you've got all the right documents, but also the implementation. You know, once you have that access to funding, it's really important to be strategic, um, you know, um, and have that intent around what am I doing with that funding and being responsible with that, with that funding, because it's really Really important for your business um, and we'd like to say thank you thank you for joining us and we are grateful to be a part of your journey um, do you reach out um, you know on our platforms you know whether it's accessing our business platforms you know looking at our financial services options that you can access from Vodacom but also engaging with some of our platforms like VHub where we sh share some of this knowledge and we'll also upload this video for you to refer to and also to share with anyone else that you know would um, benefit from this information so with that, we'd like to say thank you and we wish you all the best and we would love to hear all the wonderful stories about how you've successfully applied for finance. Thank wow. you. During the COVID pandemic, we were able to pay full salaries, continue paying full salaries, even though people were not working. It's important to know that you have funding in place that you have access to funds making sure that you are able to pay them and that they have that security that they have that knowledge that in come end of the month come payday they will get their money financial inclusion is crucial but often filled with so much red tape imagine having a partner who wants your business to win as much as you do Hello, my name is Napo Mudise, and today I'm going to chat to Michael Oosthuizen, the CEO of Central Bridge Trading in Twane, about his experience with Vodapay Business Term Advance. Arambon. Michael Oosthuizen, how are you? Like yourself. Thank you so much for welcoming me into your workspace. Um, I feel Michael a bit better again. V is Michael and where are you from? I'm from the East Rand. Okay. Grew up in Kempton Park. I now reside in Pretoria. Been living here for a while. Michael is a church going, God fearing family man and trying to trying to make the best of business. Love it, love it. So what is the name of your business? Company's name is Central Bridge Trading, and okay. then we have a Swazi company as well called CBT Building. Take me through the process of how you got funding with Vodapay Business Term Advance. I received a phone call from a client telling me that they had been awarded a hospital in Swaziland. They had a massive plumbing order that they needed to place, and it was it far exceeded my credit limits with my current supplier. I walked out the office. I was doom scrolling. Instagram uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Vodacom, Vodapay, it was Vodacom at that stage I think, mm -hmm. uh, ad popped up, um, something about learning and access up to 13 million and I thought wow let me... This is exactly what you need. Yeah, right. Yeah. So mm. I pressed the contact me now button, I didn't even fill in anything, it auto filled on, on Instagram and I mean within a, within a couple of hours I received a phone call from somebody. The interesting thing about Vodapay which made it different is they actually were willing to look at the two companies as Aha. so the South African exactly. and the international which one was the, mm -hmm. yeah, which was the problem because I had two companies running right. separately it's mm. kind of two entities that everybody wanted to look mm. at what if I looked at it as a, as a as a whole as a whole right and they based on that within four or five days I had the money in my bank 
Wow. As simple as that. As simple as yeah. that. And that hospital uh, is done right now. Yeah, that project is done. That hospital was completed successfully. Mm. And that, uh, obviously, the revolving credit facility that I got, mm-hmm. I used a couple of times after that again. Aha, uh-huh. um, fantastic. Yeah, and, and there were a couple of early settlement bonuses and all sorts of things that mm. got to pay. They're very accommodating. Right. It feels like they want to help. Now, tell me, uh, Michael, what other visions do you have for your business? I would like to have staff working for me mm. that own their own vehicles, that own their own houses, Lovely. and that are able to send their children to school and university. That's mm. the dream. Well, Michael, well done to you for uh, fetching your life yeah. and making your visions a reality. Uh, I'm wishing you all the best in all your future endeavors and taking over the world. Fantastic. Thank you. Well done, Michael. Ciao. Well, there you have it. Vodapay Business Term Advance is helping entrepreneurs like Michael turn visions into reality. Until we meet again next time, Rick Aufel.